بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The coordinate rotation digital computer is an efficient and simple algorithm to compute arithmetic, trigonometric, and hyperbolic functions. Cordic relies on simple shift-add operations to carry out many numerical tasks. The focus here will be on computing sine and cosine, which can also be viewed as vector rotation, or taking a complex number and multiplying it by e to the i theta. This means that Cordic has a place in the implementation of the fast Fourier transform, where we have complex numbers that are multiplied by the so-called twiddle factors. And the twiddle factors have this form here. If we have a two-dimensional vector with components x and y, and we want to rotate this vector by an angle theta, then the new vector x prime y prime is given by the product of the two-dimensional rotation matrix by the vector x y. So this is the matrix. We have here cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. For example, if theta is equal to 90 degrees, then this matrix is 0, 1, minus 1, and 0. If we apply this matrix to the vector 1 and 0, so this is this vector here, then the output is 0, 1, which is this vector here. This matrix will rotate the vector by an angle theta. If our initial vector is the vector 1, 0, then x prime y prime will be the first column in the rotation matrix, cosine theta, sine theta. Let's use the matrix equation to write down explicit formulas for x prime and y prime. x prime is equal to cosine theta times x minus sine theta times y. We can take cosine theta as a common factor. In this case, in the bracket, we have x minus sine theta divided by cosine theta. That's 10 theta times y. y prime is sine theta times x plus cosine theta times y. Again, we can take cosine theta as a common factor. Here, we have sine theta divided by cosine theta. That's 10 theta multiplied by x plus y. We can write down x prime and y prime using these expressions. For x prime, it is cosine theta. Between brackets, we have x minus y tan theta. And y prime, we have cosine theta. And between brackets, we have y plus x tan theta. To do rotation in Cordic, we proceed in steps. In step i, the angle by which we rotate is restricted to the inverse tangent of 2 to the minus i. If i is equal to 0, that's 10 inverse 1, which is pi over 4 or 45 degrees. If i is equal to 1, then we are talking about the inverse tangent of 1 half, and this is about 26.565 degrees, and so on. In step i, where i is 0, 1, 2, 3, we rotate by a given angle, which is 10 inverse 2 to the minus i. Why this choice? Because our expressions for x prime and y prime contain 10 theta. Now, 10 of 10 inverse 2 to the minus i, this is equal to 2 to the minus i. In other words, multiplication by 10 theta will be multiplication by 2 to the minus i. In binary, this division by 2 to the power i can be realized using a simple shift operation. In the ith iteration, we start with xi, yi, and then we obtain xi plus 1, yi plus 1. The relationship is that we have this common factor, which is cosine theta i, and then we have a 2 by 2 matrix. Here we have 1. Here we should have 10 theta. So this is 2 to the minus i. And then there will be di, which is either plus 1 or minus 1, depending on the direction of rotation. di is plus 1 if we rotate in the counterclockwise direction. di is minus 1 if we rotate in the clockwise direction. And because we have a minus here, I need to put a minus there. The second row in the matrix, we have yi is multiplied by 1. So there is a 1 here. And then we have 10 theta. This is 2 to the minus i. And we need this guy here, which is plus or minus 1, to indicate the direction of rotation. Because cosine is an even function, cosine theta i is equal to cosine minus theta i. This means that cosine plus or minus 10 inverse 2 to the minus i is just cosine 10 inverse 2 to the minus i. Suppose that this is the angle. The opposite side is 2 to the minus i, and the adjacent side is 1. Then this is square root 1 squared plus 2 to the minus 2i. And then cosine 10 inverse 2 to the minus i will be 1 divided by this square root here. Let's call this quantity ki. Note again that ki is not a function of the direction of rotation because cosine is an even function. Here is our iterations, and cosine theta i now is written as ki. We can put i equal to 0, express x1, y1 in terms of x0, y0. We can use this to express x2, y2 in terms of x1, y1, which can be expressed in terms of x0, y0, and so forth. We have now this expression relating x n y n with x 0 y 0. So we have this product of the key factors k 0 k 1 all the way to k n minus 1. We have this product of 2 by 2 matrices. 
this product here actually converges to a given value as n gets very large. This value can be calculated in advance and stored. We can, from the very beginning, start by the vector in this form here, and then focus our algorithm on determining the directions of rotations. To have a sense of the Cordic algorithm and how it operates, let's be concrete and focus on the case where we are interested in an angle of rotation of 30 degrees. Y0 is equal to 0, X0 is equal to the product. The desired angle of rotation is Z0. It's an angle between minus 90 degrees and 90 degrees. In this particular example, Z0 is equal to 30 degrees. We have a loop. What is D0? Theta is positive, thus D0 is equal to 1. Generally, in the ith iteration, di is equal to plus 1. If zi is positive, di is equal to minus 1 if zi is negative. We use these expressions to obtain x1 and y1. When i is equal to 0, the angle of rotation is 10 inverse 1, which is 45 degrees. The desired angle of rotation is 30 degrees. The current angle is 45 degrees. So in our algorithm, we update x i and y i using these expressions then we update z z i plus one is z i minus e i the inverse tangent of two to the minus i when i is zero z one is equal to z zero 30 degrees minus d zero which is equal to one then we have 10 inverse one which is 45 degrees z one is minus 15 degrees when i is equal to one and since 45 degrees is greater than 30 degrees, the difference is minus 15, then D1 is equal to minus 1. The general rule is DI is minus 1 when ZI is negative. The angle of rotation is minus 10 inverse 2 to the minus 1. This is about minus 26.565 degrees. We update X, we update Y, we update Z. Z2 is minus 15 degrees, minus D1, that's plus number here. This is positive. We started with angle 0, then 45 degrees, then 45 degrees minus the inverse tangent of 1 half. The current angle is about 18.435 degrees. The current value of Z is the current difference between the desired angle, which is 30 degrees, and the overall angle of rotation. In the ith iteration, the last step is to update Z. Z is the difference or error or discrepancy between the desired angle of rotation and the current angle. When I is incremented by one, the direction of rotation depends on the sign of Z. If Z is positive, the desired angle of rotation is greater than the current angle. So we increase the angle by moving in the counterclockwise direction. Otherwise, if Z or the current error is negative, the current angle is greater than the desired angle, and so we decrease the angle by moving clockwise. When i is equal to 2, the error is positive. d2 is equal to 1. The angle of rotation is 10 inverse 1 fourth. We call that in the ith iteration, the magnitude of the angle of rotation is fixed at 10 inverse 2 to the minus i. So that 10, 10 inverse 2 to the minus i is 2 to the minus i. We are dividing by 2 to the i which is a simple binary operation. When i is equal to 2, the current angle is incremented by about 14 degrees. The overall angle is 32.435 degrees. And Z3, the error, is 30 degrees minus this number here. Z3 is negative. So when i is equal to 3, we need to decrease the angle. We need to move in the clockwise direction. D3 is minus 1, and the angle of rotation, taking the direction into account, is minus the inverse tangent of 1 8th. This is about minus 7.125 degrees. The current angle is 25.31 degrees. That's less than 30 degrees. Z4 is positive. D4 is equal to plus 1. When I is 4, we move in the counterclockwise direction. The angle is increased by about 3.576 degrees, which is the inverse tangent of 1 over 16. The angle is still less than 30 degrees. Z5 is positive. Z5 is equal to 30 degrees minus this number. D5 is equal to 1. This angle is increased by the inverse tangent of 1 over 32. We keep doing this. Typically, we carry out like 40 iterations, which is 
in many cases sufficient to obtain the correct result to the 10th decimal place. When we are done, Xn is a very accurate approximation of cosine Z0, Yn is a very accurate approximation of sine Z0.